As you know, this identity politics and the woke nonsense is everywhere. And I've got another example to share with you, thanks to our great mate James Morrow, host of Outsiders here on Sky and, of course, political editor at the Daily Telegraph. James has reported on the latest publication of the Australian Institute for Disaster Resilience, its Journal of Emergency Management. Now, emergency management and sex or gender, you wouldn't think there'd be much overlap, would you? But this pernicious identity stuff filters into every nook and cranny. Just look at some of the articles in this edition. We get gender justice in disaster, an outcomes statement. Or we can read about government initiatives for reimagining gender in emergency management. And there's embedding gender equality in emergency management planning. And my favourite, gender toilets and evacuation centres. I mean, let me help them out with that one. You need male, you need female, you should have disability toilets. Problem solved. But what about this one? What is gender justice in disasters? A good question. I mean, do we have to rescue people by gender quota? Or perhaps the rescuers have to meet some quota? No, apparently the point is that to think constructively about gender in disasters, we need some clarity about gender. The most common ideas are that gender is simply a biological dichotomy between male and female, or that gender is an individual and very personal identity. Just extraordinary, this isn't. This stuff is written by grown adults. We're back where we began this discussion. Our emergency services are in a spin about needing some clarity about gender. There are men, there are women, there are boys and there are girls. And now and then there are trans people. And guess what? You can deal with trans people respectfully just as they might be perfectly frank in letting you know about their situation. But here's the key point. Key point, I reckon, is they are all people and the job of emergency services is to help people. Perhaps let's protect people and rescue people first and then let someone else write a thesis about their identity or their labels. Let's bring in Sky News contributor and head of GT Communications, Gemma Tonyini. Great to see you in, in the, the post-COVID <laughs> flesh. How about that? I'm free from West Australia. <laughs> I'm here in the free states. It feels so good. Yeah. <laughs> you had to climb over a wall to I get out did, or they let I you fly? Did. I did. You know, it was like mi midnight lights and, you know, getting getting out from underneath the um, underneath the wall, the rabbit-proof fence even. Now, um, I've always assumed that you're a woman. We've, I've never asked you the question. Look, but we, there's something I need to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and, but not, not that I mind either way. <laughs> oh. But what about this stuff? They're tying themselves in knots of these official bureaucracies. Why? What, what possible good comes out of I their nonsense? I genuinely don't know the answer to that. And, and reading as you were talking and listening to that copy and, and I'm trying to cast my mind forward and understand how that could practically impact a rescue situation, for example. And I was a TV journo back in the day and I was sat on the Chief of Staff's desk and I listened to many, um, many rescues taking place and I saw them being filmed from the media chopper and all that sort of stuff. And people, rescuers don't go, quick, is it a bloke or a chick? Or well, what a, if... well, actually, what it will do, it will disadvantage women because uh, traditionally we might have said women and children first. Right. Now you have to say, no, well, that's not fair, actually. We should have gender equity first. It, it, it's, a, it's a nonsense complicating factor. I think it's a space where that kind of discussion just doesn't fit. Like you said, you rescue people and just as you pay no heed to their religion or the colour of their skin or their belief system, you simply rescue them doesn't matter whether they're a man or a woman or a trans man or a trans woman or a straight person or a gay person. It doesn't matter. You simply rescue the person. And I, I wonder about the industry of this sort of conversation. Like, where are the budgets for these things? Who puts the business case up and who approves it? Yeah, and see, what drives it, of course, it's driven from a, a, initially a good intention. That is, they don't, you don't want to exclude or alienate or discriminate against trans people. No, of course but not. There's such a small segment of the community, people should deal with them with respect, but we shouldn't then pretend that there's a massive part of the community that fits into that category. I, I find it a really vexed space because you, 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 you're you quite right in watching that ex exchange from Senate estimates. It was just, it was just bizarre. It, it was just bizarre because even if you think... And, um, you know, it's, it's, it seems so much, somewhat trite to say, well, I have trans, but I do have trans friends. And my trans friends look at this and go, 
I, I don't quite understand it because for them the journey is private and very, very personal and very thought out and over a, a period of time. But the whole, it's in the name. If a person is trans, that means they are not holding that biological, you know, the original biology that they have transitioned to. They know about the transition better than anybody right. else. And then, yeah, my experience is very comfortable helping other people Correct. deal with it. Yeah. Correct.